Hi, I'm Marianne McPartland, and you swung in the trailer some hell. Way back in 1986, I was in an uncharacteristic funk. Can't remember why, but it was pretty dark. Then one day, my boss said he had tickets to an early screening of Round Midnight, and knowing how eager I was to see it, invited me as his plus one. Well, long story short, it was so transformative that two and a quarter hours later, my depression was completely gone, and I was ready to re-enter the land of the living. Many years later, I ran into the director and my fellow guru, the late lamented Bertrand Tavernier, and asked him to sign my one sheet, telling him how very much the movie meant to me. He replied, that's nice. Oh, those wacky French. There haven't been a lot of movies about jazz, so when one comes along, especially one as extraordinary as this one, attention must be paid. In fact, it may be the best fictional jazz film ever made. Supposedly, Clint Eastwood, no small jazz fan he, persuaded Warners to make it, functioning as a sort of uncredited executive producer. And at a reported budget of only $3 million, it was hardly a big risk. Oh, and one more thing a lot of people aren't aware of. You remember the line, I'll have what she's having from Harry Met Sally? Well, it originated here, in a different context, of course, but it's still just as funny. The trailer's a bit on the short side, so that's why I've been speaking a little longer than usual. But now, let's get to work, in the key of we. That is, of course, Thelonious Monk's title song, which is almost the national anthem of modern jazz. The overall problem with this trailer is how somber, even dour it is. It gives no clue to what a joyous and uplifting movie this is. And like the trailer for Paris Blues, it gives short shrift to the music that is the film's raison d'etre. The legendary Dexter Gordon, essentially playing himself, won a surprise Best Actor Oscar nomination and won a Grammy for the soundtrack. It revitalized his career, which had slowed considerably in his later years. And that's Herbie Hancock, who did win an Oscar for the score, even though it was mostly extant music, backed by a genuinely all-star band both on and off screen. And even Martin Scorsese shows up as a New York club promoter. Keep the legend alive. Was that good? It is a story of survival in the name of passion. A story of love in the name of music. God, such cliche narration. I could have written and cut a better trailer in my sleep. But take my word for it, even if you think you hate jazz, this film will convert you quicker than you can say, Sivu play, I'll have what he's having. Shall we dance?